Okay, members. Um, so I now advise you that we are in open session uh, and invite the public to the public gallery. Members, we have quorum. And can I just advise that mobile phones must be sent to airplane mode or on silent or turned off. It is not sufficient to put mobiles on silent mode as they continue to interfere uh, with the assembly recording. The session is being recorded in video and audio and can be accessed via live online streaming either on the assembly website or Democracy Live. Anyone in the gallery is welcome to use a mobile device as long as they are in airplane mode and all devices are muted. They can, they can connect to the assembly Wi-Fi. Password details are available on the gallery rules. It is not permitted to take photographs or record any of the meeting. Uh, agenda, uh, agenda item number one. Apologies. Uh, we have apologies from Mr. Dallet, Mr. McHugh, Mr. Lund, and the others. Okay. Um, members, you should be aware that Mr. Dallet has been unwell and has had a short stay in hospital. So um, the clerk uh, and I spoke earlier in the week, and we're going to send a wee card from the committee just to uh, wish him all the best. I do think he is out of hospital, isn't he? But yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, Agenda item number two then. In the minutes of the March fifth of March meeting are pages six to nine. Uh, and you will are members content with those minutes? Great. 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 Okay. Any matters arising? Okay. Your permission to sign them. Thank you. Item four, declaration of members' interests. Members at each uh, meeting, members are requested to register uh, relevant financial and other interests of, uh, of members' interest. Do any members have any interest they wish to declare this afternoon? No interest at all. <laughs> um, agenda item number five, correspondence. Members, uh, on your uh, tablet correspondence is at pages 12 to 17. I refer to emails from Mr. Edward Cook received on the 2nd and 3rd uh, of March 2020. Members, are you content to note this correspondence? Great. Okay. I refer to a memo from the Audit Committee dated the 6th of March 2020 at page 17 regarding details of the NIAO budget 2020-21. Are members content to note this uh, memo? Great. Great. Okay, members, we will remain in open session for the next two agenda items. Agenda item number six is an inquiry into managing legal aid, pages 18 to 23. And at this stage, I would invite Mr. Kieran Donnelly, CB, Controller and Controller and Auditor General, Mr. Kyle Bingham, uh, Assembly Support, to join the committee. Could I ask the clerk at this stage to outline to the committee the significance of the memorandum of reply? and in relation to the inquiry into managing legal aid. Clark. Thank you. Um, you will find details of the memorandum of reply at pages 18 to 23 of your, your pack. Um, the, the MOR, as it is known, is the Executive's Formal Response to PAC. An MOR is the Executive's Formal Response to the Assembly to the recommendations contained within the PAC report. So, in essence, an MOR consists of the Committee's recommendations and the Executive's response to them. Um, the Treasurer, Treasurer of Accounts uh, in the Department of Finance works with the departments on the production of the MORs, um, and it is the duty of the Department's Accounting Officer to respond to each PAC recommendation and for that Department's Minister to approve the text. Um, when completed, the Department of Finance strive to present MORs to the Assembly in the name of the Minister of Finance within eight weeks of the publication of a PAC report. Um, PO PAC then uh, will consider the MOR to ensure that the Department has responded appropriately and fully to PAC's recommendations. In relation to this MOR, um, this was um, an inquiry that the, a former PAC undertook into managing legal aid, um, and that report was published on the 21st of June 2016. Um, it is only coming to the committee now um, because there has not been a PAC in the time since that was published to respond to it. 
Um, there were five recommendations, so I'm just going to briefly summarise what those were. Um, and you'll see then in that document how the department has, <coughs> has dealt with that um, over the intervening period. So the first recommendation was that the committee recommended that, that the department fully test the scope for generating savings from contracting legal aid services in Northern Ireland. Um, and then moving on, the next recommendation was that the department advance the reform of legal aid. Um, number three was to recommend the department conducts a review of how expenditure currently adjudicated by the taxing master can properly be brought under um, the uh, pursuance of the accounting officer. Um, four, the committee recommends that the agency establishes a method of measuring the level of fraud within the legal aid system and develops proactive risk-based counter-fraud measures. And last, the committee recommends that the departmental accounting officer instigates a capability review of the agency's leadership team. All five recommendations were accepted and the progress in relation to each of these is provided in this MOR. Uh, and just for you to note, the, the Department of Justice um, have shared this paper with the Justice Committee as well, who also have an interest in it. Um, and um, at that point, I'll hand you back to the Chair. Thank you very much. Um, Anyone any questions on any of that? We just heard from the clerk. Okay. Um, at this stage, we would welcome Mr Donnelly, Comptroller and Auditor General for Northern Ireland, Mr Kyle Bingham and Tomas Wilkinson. You are very welcome this afternoon, uh, gentlemen. Um, Mr, Mr Donnelly, do you want to speak to the recommendations? Uh, yes. Um, I suppose uh, the committee has been uh, your predecessors had looked at legal aid expenditure twice over the years. Uh, this, uh, the last report, uh, 2017, that was your second foray into the, into the arena. Uh, I suppose reform has uh, been coming slow in, in this department. I'll just go through some of the, the main recommendations. Uh, first of all, I suppose to get a grip on uh, legal aid expenditure. Um, so, I'll take, for example, recommendation two. Uh, you recommended uh, that the department advance the reform of legal aid, focusing on uh, non-criminal legal aid remuneration rates and introducing standard fees. There's been some progress in that, but it, it's quite slow. Uh, I suppose when we're talking standard fees, it's like uh, fixed fees for certain types of work, as opposed to paying. T on a time and materials basis, uh, which is it's like any type of contract, a contractor loves being paid time and materials rather than a fixed rate. So there's been a move over the years to standardise fees here, but the progress is uh, just fa fairly slow. The other, uh, it's quite an important one here, was establishing a statutory registration scheme for all providers of publicly funded uh, legal services. So any firm of solicitors, uh, so if, if you want legal aid, you can go to any solicitor off the street. Uh, they don't have to be registered. Uh, so that needs legislation. I suppose that one couldn't really move uh, whilst the Assembly wasn't sitting this last, this last few years. Um, there was also an angle on that. Um, establish an effective management information system in the Legal Services Agency to support uh, reform. Uh, there's been a bit more progress on, on that one. Um, their, their new system went live uh, this year, so uh, they can tick the box on that. that that's an achievement. Um, there was also a recommendation on how expenditure currently is adjudicated by the taxing master can be properly brought under the purview of the accounting officer. And again, that's where um, the taxing master is a, a judicial entity. Uh, I suppose they could take decisions on, on expenditure that was outside the remit of the accounting officer. So the recommendation was to bring everything under the purview of the accounting officer. And again, the, the progress has been quite slow. 
More, better progress has been made on establishing the level of fraud. Uh, we think they've made good, good progress there um, on, on official error and a lot of collaboration with the Department of Communities uh, counter fraud team. So much better progress on that one. Um, the, the final one was then about the instigation of a capability review. Um, and I think what we can say is that the governance and leadership of the agency has undergone significant change since the time of the committee's reports. So there are positive signs there, uh, but um, definitive conclusions on success will depend on the delivery of the reform agenda. So it's a mixed bag in terms of progress. Good progress on some of the recommendations, <coughs> others others a bit slow. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, members, any comments or questions to the MOR? Mr. Hilditch. Thank you. Take it that legislation that will have to come through the Minister of Justice then, is that correct? It would, yes. Is there any inkling that that may be on her agenda soon? Uh, I, or? I don't know where that fits in. And what I do know is that the Department of Justice will have a huge legislative programme. So where exactly that fits in, I, I'm not sure. But, uh, but it is important, and it's, there's a long standing commitment to tighten up the regulations in that, in that regard. Thank you. Mr. Banks, just to follow up, is it uh, appropriate that we would ask the, the Minister for Justice? Is there a schedule, or is that straying outside our? Do, do you notice that the, the report is being forwarded to the Justice Committee, so it may well be their role oh, as right, opposed okay. to ours? Uh, that's a very good point. Uh, in the past, uh, the statutory committees have played an important role in tracking through the implementation of the recommendations of this report. And I know the Justice Committee have been in this arena before. Uh, but there's also a role, I think, for yourselves. Uh, I suppose one option would be to, to write out again to the, not to the Minister, but the Permanent Secretary uh, for a further progress report, say, in six months' time, just to keep the, these issues uh, high up the agenda. Mike? Just, oh, no, just a wee second. It might be an idea. Um, there may well be cogs happening in the background that I'm not aware of or we're not aware of. It might be an idea for us as a committee to write to the Justice Committee and ask them. Just to highlight this yeah. issue with them. That we would agree in agreement to that. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Just the other issue, if I may. Just to me, Mr. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Once again, thank you. Can know, I just actually want to ask that point about getting a wee update of where are we. Where we're at. But see, in terms of just the, you said we've made some progress. Out of the five recommendations, is, is the legislative one the one that's holding up most of the progress? Or is there other issues when we're writing for, for a wee update or report? Is there well, uh, uh, at home in? I think you would ask for a, an update on all of the ones, uh, particularly where there's still work to be done. And I think we, we can help the committee in the yes. drafting of that. Um, the statutory registration is, a, is an important one, and, and that's really in terms of how the, I suppose the legal profession is, is regulated. Uh, so, so we would see that as uh, a particularly important uh, piece of legislation that will, will need to be made. Mr. Mr. Bank. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> um, with regard to the recommendation number two. Uh, I don't know exactly when uh, the recommendations were passed, but it would appear that after two years, which is quite a considerable period of time, somebody had a complete rethink and, and they are sig identified significant concerns with proposed solutions and identified a high level of financial and legal risk. Uh, I, I'm just quite surprised that after two years somebody should identify the recommendations are, are, are their, their solutions that they have identified are, are, are not working. Uh, are we aware what what the issues are, or is somebody just roaming back on what would have been a, a good proposal? It could be either, uh, and that's exactly the type of question you know you could ask when, when you write to, to get a bit more detail exactly. Why, why there is a rollback here? Well, uh, what, what were they were proposing to do, and what, what are they now proposing to do? What it was, yeah. I, mean, I think you said that there been pro some progress in some areas, and, and not so much, on, yeah. or, or if any, on, on others. So it might be an idea if members are content that we write to the department, uh, expressing disappointment that progress has been slow in a number of those key areas uh, that you have identified, 
uh, and then the committee would like to maybe have a look at six months' time uh, to see if there's any progress. How's that? Everybody agreed? <coughs> okay, thank you. Okay, members, um, the remaining items of business is necessary to go into closed session. Uh, are members content that we go into closed session? Great, great. great. Thank you. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber programme signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber programme